And good uh, Sunday morning waking up. I uh, know a lot of you are wanting the latest on what we've got going on out in uh, the tropics across the area, but you can see there we have Marco and we have Laura off in the kind of over the Dominican Republic. And of course you have Marco now in the Gulf of Mexico, still a tropical storm as of 7 a.m. 70 mile per hour sustained winds across the area. But as you can see, we switch our graphics over. We still got our very complicated forecast with uh, the two systems. Now I wanted to point this out because it looks like they intersect, right? But it does not look like these are really going to interact with each other because of timing of the two systems. Here's where we're expecting Marco to be by tomorrow afternoon. Landfall somewhere near the Louisiana coast uh, as a possibly category one storm. But you look at Laura and you've got a landfall by Thursday morning, late Wednesday into early Thursday morning hours, possibly as a category two. So that's the big update with Laura. It's a bit stronger. It's trended a bit further west. I'm going to talk much more about that in a second, but I want to talk about Marco first because that is our immediate concern here for uh, the northern Gulf Coast. This was as of 7 a.m. 70 mile per hour sustained winds. It is right on the verge of becoming a hurricane. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a hurricane with a 10 a.m. update. The hurricane hunters are in there now, and if they find that it's a hurricane before 10 a.m. They'll likely uh, update it uh, then, but you can see there are fairly small system. You've got a lot of showers and storms right there near the center, really dry on the west side. That's because there's still a lot of wind shear in dry air. It's moving northwest at about 13 miles per hour. Now they do still have it becoming a hurricane later today. We'll have to see when that happens. It would be Hurricane Marco making that northwesterly track, and then there it is getting close to the Louisiana coast by tomorrow uh, afternoon excuse me, as a possibly category one storm somewhere, you know, off the coast. I don't want you to necessarily focus on landfall right there because it could very easily go to this side of the cone. It could very easily go a little bit further towards the north, uh, closer to, let's say, St. Bernard Parish up towards kind of coastal Mississippi. So this is still the uncertainty of it, but it is looking more and more likely we'll see a landfall somewhere on the coast of southeast Louisiana by Monday afternoon. Now that means our conditions will start to go downhill later tonight. Now I want to show you the reason we don't expect this to really blow up into much more than it is maybe a weak category one storm is because it is fighting the wind shear and it's fighting the dry air. Look at all the dry air in the browns, your deep tropical moistures in the blues here. That's of course with the tropical system and you've got southwest wind with this trough digging down that is pushing that dry air trying to push into the center of the storm. Now it is fairly a fairly good envelope of uh, tropical moisture, so it might not feel too much of effects from this. But don't be surprised to see this storm. It's small. It might pulse up. It'll get stronger and then it might get some dry air in, the, in there. It'll weaken and it might continue to do that as it makes its way towards the coast. Now, as it gets closer to the coast, we do expect it to weaken and that's why we have it making that kind of westerly track. Now, the wind filled with this system, it's a pretty compact system, meaning we're not expecting winds uh, to be crazy across the entire area. It's going to be very close to the core of the system. And you can see here in the yellows, that's your tropical storm force winds, tropical storm force winds a little bit stronger in the orange and then when you get in the yellow that's your hurricane force uh, winds of 74 miles per hour or greater. It's very small notice. Now as we go into tomorrow morning by around 7 a.m. Let me back that up because I want to show you. As we go into maybe 5, 6, 7 a.m. notice, we're starting to see some of those tropical storm force winds get to the mouth of the river. So winds could pick up later tomorrow night into or tonight going into tomorrow morning. And then as we get into, let's say, the lunchtime hour notice, that's when the core of the storm gets closer to making landfall. Where that is, it's still to kind of be seen. It could be a little bit further towards the west. It could be a little bit further to the east. But just notice how small that core is. So if it did take this track, for example, Grand Isle right here, that's the location that would see the strongest winds from Marco as it moves inland. Also notice as we advance this, it's making more of that kind of northwesterly turn and it's weakening. So we could see some of the tropical storm force winds certainly in the metro. We could see tropical storm force winds kind of on the north shore. I think that the wind will decrease as you get closer to maybe Washington Parish, Tangipahoa Parish, uh, Upper Tangipahoa Parish, and inland Mississippi. But right along the coast, right along the lake, in the metro, and all of the south shore has the best chance of seeing some stronger winds as Marco moves on through. 
Now, of course, uh, preparations for this storm, you're going to have to do it today because it's here tomorrow. So do anything you need to do. Get outside, get every, all the loose things picked up that could blow around. You don't want any of that. About a 60% chance of rain going throughout this afternoon and evening. That means the tropical downpours will start to increase. And really tonight, you'll start to see things go downhill. Monday morning into Monday evening, it's going to be dealing with Marco pretty much on and off all day long. And then as we go into Tuesday, I still think we'll have plenty of that deep tropical moisture, that strong onshore flow. Uh, but maybe a little less windy, of course, and then we're focusing on Laura, which is trailing behind Marco as we go into Wednesday and Thursday. So here's when you can expect those winds to start to pick up 8 a.m. along the coast, uh, maybe a little bit before that, and then gradually increasing throughout Monday afternoon for the rest of the area. That is for Marco, of course. We're also watching the storm surge. That's usually our biggest concern around here, along with the rainfall. Uh, two to four feet in the lake. That's manageable, but don't be surprised, of course, if Marco goes towards the west of the city, you're going to have that strong northerly uh, or southerly push with the water. So the areas that go underwater when we get a strong southerly wind on the north shore right along the lake, probably going to see that again in this case. You're also going to see water piling into Lake Bourne, so we know Shell Beach. You're going to see inundation four to six feet certainly uh, is going to be noticeable. Remember back for Cristobal, we saw some pretty big inundation there. Same thing for Bay St. Louis, for Waveland, for Gulfport, Long Beach, past Christiana on the Mississippi coast, going down in Lower St. Bernard and going down into Plaquemines Parish. Parish, um, all of Plaquemines Parish could see, you know, four to six feet of the low lying areas, of course, and then uh, it'll be more of that kind of southeasterly wind pushing in if the track is to your west. It all depends on the track, right? Then as you go closer to uh, Lower Jefferson, Grand Isle, Lower Lafouche, Port Fouchon, Galliano, down towards Leeville, uh, Gold Meadow, you're looking at maybe four to six feet and four to six feet south of Homa, Cocodri, Chauvin, things like that. So that's where we're expecting the storm surge to be highest, and it'll likely be highest right next to the center wherever that may be. So uh, all those areas, you know where you live down there. You see the water very, very easily here in the city. Of course, we're protected by the levees. We don't expect any issues uh, with that with this system. Now, Laura transitioning. Uh, it's 7 a.m. update, not much stronger, and it's because it's still over the Dominican Republic, right? It's sitting right over it. A lot of storms with it. It is a pretty healthy system for one to be sitting over land. Winds 45 miles per hour, gusting to 60. It is moving very quickly still west northwest at 18 miles per hour. And we need to watch what Laura does over the next couple of days because I think that's going to impact where it goes in the long term. So it has it tracking right over Cuba. Basically, uh, it may be a little bit further towards the south than what we've been dealing with the past couple days with the track. But notice not intensifying much, maybe remaining a weak tropical storm. There it is in the Gulf of Mexico by Tuesday morning. Now, once it gets in the Gulf of Mexico, it's got warm waters. It's going to have low wind shear, and there's not a whole lot of dry air in the Gulf of Mexico once Laura gets there. So that is a recipe for a strengthening storm. We do expect it to get into a hurricane maybe by late Tuesday and into Wednesday. And look at this strengthening possibly up to a, to landfall. So uh, I think they're gradually bumping these numbers up. Now you can see here the cone takes it in kind of westerly northwesterly in that turn to the north. However, a trend we've been watching this morning with overnight model runs, the spaghetti plots, things like that is a trend towards the west with some models. Not every model shows this, but some certainly do. Uh, so don't be surprised with the 10 a.m. update to see this cone maybe jumped a little bit closer towards Houston and a little bit more of the Texas coast uh, as we get a better idea. Now, New Orleans, we're still watching this because we're on the east side. We're on the dirty side of the storm. As you can see it moving towards the northwest, we would be on this side. We'd get the strong onshore flow, so we would likely see higher than normal tides and some rainfall. The big question is just how close does it get to southeast Louisiana. So this is too close for comfort at this point, but notice we could have a strong hurricane making landfall somewhere between Texas and Louisiana by Thursday morning, early Thursday morning, more like Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Uh, so watching this very, very closely. Now, could this number go up? It could. It depends on what it looks like when it gets to the Gulf. If it gets off of Cuba and it looks pretty healthy, then this thing could really blow up into something in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if it gets off Cuba and it is ragged, it may take a little bit longer for that to organize once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. But the overall message is Laura is moving into an environment that uh, if you live really from Texas to Louisiana, you've got to watch this thing very, very um, closely. So with the 10 a.m. update, don't be surprised to see some shifts there. Now, I want to go back because I want to point out one other thing with this track and something else we're going to be watching as Laura gets to the Gulf of Mexico, and it's, it's kind of jumping off point. 
It looks like um, if we see Laura stay kind of south on the southern edge of Cuba, getting towards the Gulf and kind of on the southern tip here towards the Yucatan, it would likely go more towards Texas. That's what models are showing, and it could get quite strong if it did that. Now, if the storm um, kind of stays over Cuba and jumps off near Cuba or to the north of Cuba, kind of off the Key West here, um, it could potentially come a little bit closer to southeast Louisiana. So which one of those happens is anyone's, anyone's guess right now. Um, and it's just something we're going to have to watch because land interaction is so, so difficult to forecast when you're talking about a tropical system. And land often at times will throw around whatever center of circulation you have. So it could toss it to the bottom on one you know, hour and then try to toss it to the north the next hour. What that looks like when it gets to Tuesday morning is important because I think that's going to be um, very important to the final evolution of where this thing makes landfall. And of course, I already showed you that. So looking at the impacts and possibly when winds could start to pick up from Laura, it would be about a day and a half later from compared to Marco. So by Monday morning, uh, about 24 hours from now, we'll start to see winds pick up along the coast from Marco. And then we're looking at about Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. when winds would pick up from uh, whatever Laura is. It depends on, of course, how close it is. So that's what we're looking at with the timeline there. So preparations for Laura would have to be more than likely done today as well, because there might not be a whole lot of gap in between Tuesday to get things done. So there, those are the changes we're dealing with. Um, Laura may be a bit stronger in the Gulf, maybe a bit further west as well. There's still a big question mark with that. So we're watching Wednesday and Thursday for Laura impacts. Uh, Monday is going to be a Marco thing. So tomorrow, uh, get your things done today. We'll see a few tropical downpours going throughout today. Um, and, you know, they could produce some gusty winds here and there. I want to look at radar before we leave you here just to see what we're seeing uh, in the area right now because we do still have, you know, plenty of downpours kind of moving in already. Um, now these could produce some downpours or some some gusty winds as these kind of rotate into the area, not moving all that fast because this is kind of more the outer moisture with Marco, but it is associated kind of with the broad setup that we've got going on. So spotty downpours will continue as we go throughout the morning hours down along the coast this morning, down towards Port Fouchon, Grand Isle. I know a lot of people are getting in and getting out of there at the moment. You're going to see some downpours as you head towards the north up inland. Uh, we've got some strong showers uh, and heavy showers moving towards Bay St. Louis, Biloxi, Gulfport, Lower St. Bernard towards Shell Beach, and I do expect more of these to move into the New Orleans and North Shore areas we go throughout um, the afternoon. But of course, more rainfall expected as we go into your Monday as we continue to track Marco. So that is the latest as of 7 a.m. We'll get our next official update at 10 a.m. from the National Hurricane Center, and we'll actually we'll be on Facebook and on air too, um, or online, but we're also going to be on Channel 4 bringing you updates um, as well. So we might see some additional changes to the track forecast and things like that. Thanks everyone so much for joining me, and uh, just a reminder, use today to prepare for Marco, which is expected to arrive tomorrow afternoon.